In the last session, we were talking about drawing atoms. In this session, we're going to talk about atoms versus ions. This one can be a little bit confusing, so you may have to watch this video segment a couple of times, but I'm going to do this as easy as I know possible. Reminder, still need to have that periodic table because we're going to use that periodic table a lot in this section. What's something very simple? Let's start with sodium, just as a review. Sodium is element number 11. So when you have 11, that means you're going to have 11 protons and 11 electrons because you're neutral. Now, again, we're going to, we know there are neutrons there, but we're just going to ignore them for right now. It'll make life a little easier for what we're doing here. Sodium has 11 electrons. That would be uh, 1, 2 in the first ring, 8 in the second ring, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 and 2 is 10. And one more is 11. Now I'm going to take this one and compare it to another element, chlorine, element 17. 17 protons, 17 electrons, neutral. Now you may wonder, okay, why does he keep doing the math? It's going to be very important here in just a second. Now I'm going to make this one, I'll just keep it the same color, completely different elements. Two electrons in the first, eight in the second, and they may think, okay, this is a review. It is. We're going to do something different with it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 and 2 is 10. That gives me 7 more. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's what they look like. This is what we did in the last session. Here's what a sodium atom looks like when we draw it. Remember, atoms don't look like this. This is how we draw them on paper so that we understand them. Same thing is true here. This is a chlorine atom. They're different from each other. How do I know? Well, 11 protons. 17 protons, every element has different protons, but this is how we draw them. Now, here is where it is different. So far, we've drawn atoms. This is correct, and this is correct from the last session. Exactly right. Now, here's the easiest way I know to explain what ions are. Atoms look like this and this but they don't like to look like that. Atoms want to look like you and I on Thanksgiving Day. You see, when we have Thanksgiving, we have lots and lots of food. We are completely full. We want to be full of electrons. It's actually what is called the octet rule in chemistry. It's having full outside ring R-I-N-G of electrons. I want to have a full outside ring of electrons. They want to be full. Now let's check. First ring's full. Two. Second ring's full. Eight. Third ring only has one. That's not full. First ring has two. That's full. Second ring has eight. That's full. Third ring has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ah, oh, he's so close. But he's not full either. Atoms, this is correct. This is correct. So you have to watch your words. It says, Adam, this is right and this is right. But atoms don't like to be like that. They want to be full. So how do atoms do that? Well, here's how they do it. Let's talk about sodium here for a second. How could he be full? Well, if there's one in the outside ring, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven empty boxes or seven empty spaces. There aren't actually boxes in an atom. There's seven empty spaces here. If he could somehow find seven, he would be full. Check this guy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This guy only has one empty space. Hmm, let's see what they can do. Well, let's go back to sodium. Here's what happens. There's two choices every time. Two choices. Here are the choices. Choice number one, he could gain seven electrons, and he would be full. Or... Let's say he threw away one electron. Now I'm going to let that electron freeze right there. Just let it just freeze right there. Now, how do I know what to do? Well, I have to look at this. Take in seven or getting one, which sounds easier. Excuse me. Taking in seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or giving away one. To me, it sounds a lot easier if he gives away one. If I'm correct, if he gives away one, 
there's nothing in the outside ring anymore. If I race very carefully here, you'll notice inside ring has two. Outside ring has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is he full? He is full. He is happy. That's exactly what he wants. Now, again, I'm going to have this electron. It's just freezing right there for a second. But here's the most important thing. This guy still has 11 protons. How do I know? I didn't touch the nucleus right there in the middle. But now he has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 electrons. He lost one. 11 protons, 10 electrons. 11 pluses, 10 minuses. He now has a plus 1 charge. Let me do that math again. 11 pluses, 10 minuses. He has one more plus. He now has a charge. He looks like a magnet. So in A has a plus one charge. Is he okay with that? Yes, because he's full. That's what he wants is to be full. Let's look at the chlorine over here. Chlorine has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in the outside ring. So he has two choices as well. Again, two choices. Choice one, get one electron and be full. Choice two, give away seven to be full. To me, it sounds easier if he gets one from somebody. And let's just put that electron inside that box. He's now full. That is what he wants. He wants to be full. He's happy now. But this guy has 17 protons and now has 18 electrons. He gained one. 17 pluses, 18 minuses. He became negative one. This and this is what is called an ion. I'm about to give you a definition, so make sure you write this down. An ion is an atom with a charge. An atom with a charge. Why did he now have a charge? Because he was trying to be full. And when he's trying to be full, he chooses to move electrons. He either throws away electrons or gains electrons to be full, whichever is easiest. Now, what I want to do here for a minute is I want to show you a couple more just to make sure we've got it. Then we're going to do something with those guys. We'll do this one just a little bit faster, not near as slow. Let's take something like nitrogen. Nitrogen is element 7. 2 in the first. Five in the outside. One, two, three, four, five. And let's also take somebody like um, magnesium, which is element number 12. Two in the first. One, two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, nine, ten. He needs two more. One, two. This process isn't very difficult. Let's count. How many does this guy have in his outside ring? One, two, three, four, five. Is he full? No. He has three empty spaces. This guy has two in his outside ring, so he has got six empty spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six. You have a choice to be full. What are you going to do? Well, in this case, one, two, three, four, five. Is it easier to give away five or take in three? The easiest thing to do is to take in three electrons. Now, you may be thinking, where does he get them? Don't worry, I'm going to fix that question here in the next session, but we just want to see how they make ions. We're going to talk about where they get them here in just a minute. So getting three electrons from someone else would be how he's going to fix himself. So he now has seven protons and ten electrons. How did I get ten? Two here, one, two, three, four, or five, and gain six, seven, and eight. Eight and two is ten. He becomes minus three charge. So nitrogen becomes minus three. You'll notice the symbol, and up high in a superscript, negative three, gaining three electrons. What does this guy do? Two electrons and one, two, three, four, five, six. This guy, giving away two or gaining six, it sounds easier if he gives away two. If he does that, that whole ring disappears. It's gone. 
and now he's full. So he now has 12 protons, because I didn't touch his nucleus right there, couldn't get there. Now he has 10 electrons. 12 pluses, 10 minuses, plus 2 charge. Mg becomes a plus 2 charge. These are what are called ions. The only difference between them is this. You draw atoms and ions the same way. Atoms look exactly like they do on the chart. Equal number of protons and electrons. When they move their electrons to be full, that is what's called an ion. In the next section, I'm going to give you a couple of atoms and see if you can convert them into ions yourself.